Now listen and read the telephone conversation that happened between Gonwon and Ojuku and Babatunde Ogundibe in July 29th, 1966, after the genocide that they call coup. And always they tell you and say, some people, eh, they are not humans. Some people are not humans. Animals, true, true, they in human form. Just the way I started talking for her music. It's only because, say, now your tribe, now you carry out the genocide, so it is okay. When I tell the man, not waste no time. Let's dive into it. Now, I'm reading from Star Information. Ogundi Bay and Ujuku and Gowon in 1966. The tussle for power on the road to Aburi. Now, this article was written on the 26th of December, 1999. So, nobody to deny the right time. So, right now, I'm taking you from the very beginning, which is number one. Hierarchy of the Nigerian Army as of January 1st, 1966. Now, the writer was so fair, objective, and then honest here. The writer said, I really cannot tell for a fact the entire hierarchy of the Nigerian military as of January 1st, 1966. But from various sources, as far as I could gather, these are the names and their order of seniority. Now, let me scroll a little bit. All right. Major General Johnson Agui Ironsi, GOC, Nigerian Army. Brigadier Zakaria Mai Malari, Commander, 2nd Brigade. Brigadier Samuel Ademulegun, Commander, 1st Brigade. Brigadier Babantude Ogundibe, Chief of Army Staff, Supreme Headquarters. Colonel Kor Mohamed, Army Chief of Staff, Colonel Basi, Colonel Robert Adenika Adebayo, Colonel Raf Shudendi, Commandant NMTC, Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lagema, Commanding Fort Battalion, Nibadon, Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Pam, the Adjutant General, Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Unegbe, Quartermaster General, Lieutenant Colonel Imu, Lieutenant Colonel Hilary Njoku, Commanding Officer, Second Battalion, Ikeja, Lieutenant Colonel Adekunde Fajui, the one that was murdered with Irosi. Lieutenant Colonel David Ejo, commanding garrison in um, the one in charge of a uh, Benin garrison in Midwestern region. Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon. Lieutenant Colonel Udumego Ujuku, commanding officers in Kanu. Lieutenant Colonel Kurubo. Lieutenant Colonel Hassan Katsina. Now, number two says, why Ogundi did not become supreme commander? The person started. He now cited where he took his story from. About Ogundi Ujuku and Gowon. Let me give you two accounts from one, that is one, one of the accounts from the biography of Obasanjo, which I have just checked on, and the other from Kole, Kole or Motoso, just before done. Sorry if I couldn't get the names right for my Yoruba guys. Now, 2A, let's read. 2A is from Obasanjo, In the Eyes of Time, a biography of the African statesman by Onukaba Adinoyi Ojo, page 101, quote, now we are quoting from the book now. With Ironsi dead, Brigadier Baba Gudibe, the Chief of Staff Supreme Headquarters, was the next most senior officer in the country. But he realized that the Northern officers had not reached their lives to install him in power as General Ironsi's successor. So now fear the worry, Baba. Perhaps fearing, uh -huh, fearing that the coup plotters might eliminate him as well. He escaped from the country and reemerged later in London, where he was appointed Nigeria's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. For three days, for three days, July 29 to August 1st, 1966, the nation's blood smeared. Presidency remained vacant. It was an interregnum, right? While Nigeria waited in anguish for a leader, northern officers led by Gowon and Motala Mohammed were at the Keja cantonment debating whether or not to lead their nation out of the Union. The intervention of some federal permanent secretaries, the, the British High Commissioner, I mean the British High Commission, and the American Embassy in Lagos, as well as the presence of a few saner and reasonable officers among them, persuaded the group to allow the North remain within a united Nigeria. When they mean the group, they are talking about the mutinous, the coup plotters. Having grudgingly agreed to a united Nigeria, the officers chose and installed Gowon, the most senior officer from the North, who had not participated in the coup. As Nigeria's second military head of state on August 1st, 1966, the coup planners, the list included Martin Adamu, this is where I was going, Martin Adamu, Shehu Musa Yaradwa, Muhammadu Buhari, Pam Nwakom, Ibrahim Babangida, John Longham, Garba Duba, Jerry Useni, Ibrahim Baku, Musa, Musa Usman Shitu, right, Alao, 
wanted Major Mohammed to be the head of state. Now, all these school plotters, they wanted who? Major Mohammed to be the head of state. But Mohammed said, go on. An, aff an affable, good-looking man should lead it because he was the most senior. Not that he was the most effective or capable or the most intellectually equipped or the most dynamic or the most knowledgeable officer from the North. The next part says, so this is the writer now, the writer of this article said, so in fact, from this account, which I just checked into, Ojuku was arguing for either Ogundibe or Basi, not for any <laughs> Igbo man. Now let's continue. To be, this is from the account of Kole Omoto Shows, mm? fractional boot just before dawn, Spectrum Boots, 1988. Beautiful. So let's read. Page 255, we start quoting. Brigadier Ogundibe was the most senior army officer after the eliminations of the January 66. Mm? When he learned on the morning of July 29 that there had been trouble in Ibadan, he tried to bring the situation under control. He sent Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, who was just resuming duty that morning as the commander of 2nd Nigeria Army Base at Ikeja, replacing Lieutenant Colonel Hilary Njoku. You remember that Colonel Njoku that escaped with bullet wounds? He was the one commanding Ibadan. But because he escaped when the chaos started, Go on, now how to take over, right? To go to the barracks at Ikeja and deal with the rebels since that was where they were operating from. Go on, went. Now, after saying that, can someone find me Joseph Garba? Ogundibe asked. Ogundibe continued. I think I'm still supposed to be the chief of staff supreme headquarters. What is going on in this place? Some senior officers who were coming and going trying to find out what was happening, heard the voice of Brigadier Ogundibe and came to his office. They were Commodore Akinwale Wei, Alaji Kam Salem, Lieutenant Colonel Onwuna and Major Mobalaji Johnson. They were there when Captain Joseph Garuba came into the office of the Chief of Staff, Supreme Headquarters. Ogundibe now asked, can you explain what it means when one of your soldiers says he will not obey me unless you say so? It means one soldier had already disrespected him. Let's continue. What is going on here? Who is running things here? Me or you? Ogudibe asked Joseph Garuba. Joseph Garuba, Joseph Garuba now said, Excuse me, sir. Ogudibe now interrupted him. That is why I called you because I wanted you. Because I wanted your excuse. Garuba now said, The fact is, Ogudibe now interjected him again. The fact that I know right now is that if a soldier in this army says he will not obey me unless his captain told him so, then we are finished. There is no army anymore. I should simply throw away this uniform. Where this uniform? Where is the pride of being a soldier? Of being an officer? If a soldier would not obey an officer, what have we turned the Nigerian army into? Quickly. There was no way Joseph Garuba could make any explanation under the circumstances. Brigadier Ogundibe had been traumatized by that one experience. Captain Garuba stood there watching his senior the superior officer, saying nothing. Finally, the brigadier sat down and waved Garba away. He noticed that the salute he got was for form's sake. Now listen, this is the main deal I've been waiting for. At a later encounter with Garba, Ogundibi said, go back and ask them the minimum condition they, the northern mutinous, are prepared to give to stay in Nigeria. Once more, Joseph Garuba got into his Land Rover and drove to Ikeja. As he was leaving, a call came in from Onicha. It was who? Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku, military, of, military governor of the Eastern region. Ogunibe took the telephone. Now let's listen. Pay close attention. Hello, what's happening? Where is the Supreme Commander? Ironsi Ojuku asked. Nobody knows where the Supreme Commander has been taken to. He and Lieutenant Colonel Fajui were arrested in Ibadan yesterday. The northern troops have staged a counter coup. They have sent their families back to the north and they want to break up the country. Ojukuna responded, Is it not possible for you to become the supreme commander? You are the next most senior officer in the army. I will then. Ogudibena interrupted him and said, Forget it. An ordinary soldier will not obey me. Mm -hmm. I will announce my support for you. That is, this is Ojuku talking now. I will announce my support for you within 30 minutes of your announcing your takeover. Ogudibena said, Listen, Ojuku, forget that. We are at Present negotiate. We are we are presently negotiating with the coup makers to find out what they want. Keep in touch. Ujuku now screamed. Come on! Shouted Ujuku into the telephone. Brigadier Ogudibe held the receiver. That is, as at that time, you know he's walking talking. 
And I had the receiver away from his face. Take a risk at them. He now, you know, carry the receiver towards the soldiers. And he told Ojuku, shout at them. Go on the air and say something. Go on the air and say something. There was silence from Ogundibe's side. He was thinking to himself, it is my life on the line, not yours. So this is what Ogundibe thought in his heart. Ojuku continued. Tell the country you are the next most senior officer. You do not know where the supreme commander is. But you are trying to put the country, put the situation under control. Are you still there? Because he was silent. Ojuku asked him, are you still there? After a long pause, yes, I am here. I will do that. Ogundibe replied. Now, after that conversation with Ojuku, Brigadier Ogundibe did broadcast, did a broadcast throughout the country, declaring a state of emergency for Lagos, Abekuta, and Ibadan. Those of you that have read the peripheral part of the story, you know this uh, declaration as at that time. And saying that things would soon return to normal. Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Ojuku got back to Brigadier Ogundibe as soon as he heard he had listened to the broadcast at 2.30 p.m. Ojuku called back. That is not what I meant. Ojuku told Ogundibe. That is not what I meant. Say something strong. Say you are stepping into Iran's shoe. And that's it. Brigadier Ogundibe just listened, not getting satisfaction. Ojuku dropped the telephone. Later that evening, Brigadier Ogundibe recorded another message to the nation coming everyone and saying there was no there was now no cause for alarm since everything was under control mm -hmm. david edger telephoned from benin wanting to know what was going on the chief of staff ogundibe told him what he had told ujuku then david edger let's not call him david edger now why haven't you taken over them the chief of staff explained the situation now but I am sure the rest of the members of the Supreme Military Council would support you. Ogundi Bena replied, Thank you, David. But it is no use. We will keep you informed. Or you will find out what we work, what we work out with the coup makers. When the phone call was over, Brigadier Ogundi Bena took a piece of paper and wrote a letter of resignation from the army and sent it to the Ministry of Defense. He then drove to his house. At a later date, the telephone rang. Mutala Muhammad picked it up, then turned to Yakub Gowon. It is Ujuku. Now, this is the conversation between Gowon and Ujuku. I need you all to listen. It is Ujuku. He wants to speak to you. Mut Why Mutala said that he covered the map piece of the phone, looked at Gowon directly, and said to Gowon, Now, I want to know every word he says to you before you reply. That is what Mutala Muhammad told Gowon. Beautiful. The others in the room, in addition to Gowon and Mutala Muhammad, Justice Muhammad Bellu, Shitu Alao of the Air Force, Buba Usman of Military Intelligence, nodded in agreement. So they agreed with Mutala Muhammad. Quickly, Gowon could be kind. He was not the kind of ruthless person who should deal with these people. Taught Mutala Muhammad. That was what Mutala Muhammad taught in his heart. The only way to ensure that he did not make any commitment which they could not accept was to monitor every word that he had to say. The telephone conversation was therefore very slow. Ojuku was recording the conversation. What is going on? Ojuku asked. Gowon narrated the incidents of the last few days as innocently as possible, using the passing tense to maintain ambiguity. The other, the other ranks, mutiny and death have occurred. The Supreme Commander and the Military Governor of the West were arrested and nothing is known of their whereabouts. So what is being done? The most senior officer is, this is Ojuku talking now, the most senior officer is Brigadier Ogundibe. Let him step in and restore order until we find out what has happened to the Supreme Commander. That is Ironsi. Gowon has said, that is out of the question. Ojuku now said, why? Gowon continued, the boys who organized the revolt insist that they want the North to go separate. This is Gowon who said it. Heaven did not fall. Ojuku now said, well, Go on and continue. They said I should step in as head of state and supreme commander of the armed forces. Ojukuna told him, you can take over Lagos, but definitely not in the east. I have already been in contact with all... Ojuku, Ojuku, this is Go on saying now. I have already been in contact with all the other members of the Supreme Military Council and they agreed that I should take over. Ojukuna said, that is impossible. There are other senior officers in the army. In the armed forces, including the armed forces, the line of succession would have been something like this. Ojukuna mentioned them. Commodore Wei, head of the Nigerian Navy, 
Brigadier Ogundibe, who had already resigned from the army, Colonel Adeyika Adebayo, who would have been as unacceptable as Ogundibe, Lieutenant Colonel Basi, Lieutenant Colonel Imu, Lieutenant Colonel Njoku, who would be an atima to the mutineers because you already, you know, you already engaged them in, in Ibadan. Don't forget. They came in alphabetical order, Lieutenant Colonel David Ejo, Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, Lieutenant Colonel Odumegu Ojuku, both Gowon and Ojuku had been promoted to the level of Lieutenant Colonel on the same date of April 1st, 1964. And that's about two years um, prior to this time. That's about two years. Listen, Ojuku continued, if you want to take over simply as chief of staff of the army and only as such in Lagos so that you can bring the situation under control, I shall cooperate with you so that Ogundibe or whoever is next in seniority can assume power. As I said earlier, Gowon replied, the other governors have agreed to my takeover. But there is no governor in the West. And Sadu Juku. Juku told him, but there is no governor in the West because Ogundibe have resigned. Gowon has said, all the same, I have talked to someone who can answer for the West and he agrees with my taking over. Ujuku now told him, I do not recognize you as Supreme Commander insisted Ujuku. I am making a statement to the nation later tonight. Anyway, Ujuku dropped the telephone and switched off the tape recorder. He got up and lit a cigarette. There was no way he would blah, 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 blah. Can I hear that, Beautiful. Now my question when I get to ask, you see, the rest of the army colonel, uh, major generals, then, when they mention for the list, hmm, where were they? Because in the whole saga, now only Ujuku, now we see. The rest of them, they're showing they, them, uh, all of them. We didn't, we didn't hear anything from them. And be it as it may, the East already make alliance with the West. You see, I say, Ojuku call Baba Tunde Ogundi say, take over. I am behind you. The Videjo from a uh, Midwestern region already move along with them. So the East, Midwest, and then West, they were already together. But Ogundi may not really declare himself. Because of fear, because of fear, Ogundi be resign. Leave Nigeria to carry your team by itself, you know, consign now. But Ojuku was fearless. He had to call go on. And the same go on, we know what you see here, say, Ojuku mentioned disintegration. The same go on, use your own mouth. And answer and say, eh, the northern soldier said that they want the north to leave Nigeria. As at the time he was canvassing for them, no be crime, oh. Nobody call for any reno, but the moment Ojuku mentioned, yeah, why would he mention it? For what? Who gave him the infantry? Is he a human being? And some of us, they, they don't twist our mind. We get online, they write a manner of terrible narrative. Write lies. I'm not waiting on one game from lies. I'm not waiting on one game. Just as life may have it. You see, Motala Mohammed, when I see the way it end, ba? Few years later, <laughs> you should buy the gun. You go, by the gun also. On I tell you, if you don't want to yourself off all this unnecessary tribal bigotry, unnecessary tribal ego, you won't get whenever you fetch you one naira. Eh? Until then, you're chichi, you're chon, chon, chon. We know they pray, oh, I don't go feel full now.